Hello everybody and just here and welcome back to Spice and the Wolf 2024 episode 3 in uh, which we will visit some sort of a port city. And that's basically all we know. <laughs> um, in the previous episode, Polo and uh, Lawrence uh, stayed at some sort of an abbey for the night. And... Uh, they met a couple of merchants, and among them was uh, Jeren, Jeren, Zeren, however you pronounce it. I would pronounce it Jeren, but maybe Zeren is more appropriate. I know. Let's say Zeren. Uh, among them, Zeren, uh, who looks very shady and uh, wants to get cra uh, craft, well, Lawrence craft, wants to get Lawrence into uh, currency speculation. Uh, because apparently the country will be changing their silver currency and uh, it's going to have more silver in it, so it's going to be worth more. Uh, so if you amass the current currency and then you exchange it for the new currency, then you will get like more money and stuff like that. Um, it's shady somehow. We don't know how exactly, uh, but it certainly seems shady. Uh, we will see about that, actually, what happens. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be today's episode that we deal with it, or future episodes. We'll see. We'll see. Today's episode would feel kind of too fast for that, because it wouldn't give uh, Lawrence any time to even do his uh, research into currency, whether he wants to be a part of the uh, ploy or not. We'll see, of course. Uh, then we also got some uh, talk about uh, Holo and religion a little bit. Uh, about uh, the like uniform religion encroaching on uh, pagan religion in general. And uh, lastly, we got a little bit of talking about the victims of humans and the victims of wolves. Uh, Lawrence lost someone to the wolves, uh, represented by Holo, and Holo lost someone to the humans, represented here by Lawrence. Um, that's at least my uh, suspicion here. So they do have things to talk about, for sure. And uh, perhaps there is a chance that uh, humans and wolves could coexist, right? Maybe. Maybe. There's kind of an allegory to be found here. The way humans encroach on the territory of wolves and chase them away and kill them. The way unified religion encroaches onto the territory of pagan religion and chases it away and kills it. Maybe, I don't know if, it, if, if, if that's actually it, uh, but uh, it certainly is a certain similarity there, isn't there? And that's where the episode ended. Holy fuck, how windy is it? But my window is closed and I hear the wind blowing past it. Jesus Christ. All right, well... That's April for you, I guess. Um, and uh, what do I expect from today's episode? I don't know, really. Uh, we're probably going to make it to the port town. If it is the port town where uh, Lawrence promised to meet Zeren, uh, then uh, they will probably discuss the um, speculation, the currency speculation, and uh, Lawrence will either join or not. Probably not, let's be honest here. Uh, he will probably find uh, will find out why he would not want to join the plot. And uh, if it's not the same city, then uh, I can see Lawrence and Holo trying to gather some information to make that decision. Uh, also, important thing from the previous episode, uh, Holo can tell whether someone's lying or not, so that's going to be very useful to Lawrence in general. So, uh, I guess we should just... Uh, watch this episode and see for ourselves what's gonna happen, right? Uh, to do that, we'll need your subs, of course, to follow along with me. I'm gonna need my sound to hear what's going on in the show. And I'm gonna have to ask you for support. Support the channel if you want to monetarily on Patreon or YouTube down below or not. Share my content, spread the word, cost you nothing, helps a lot. And with that, we can start watching episode 3 of Spice and Wolf in 3, 2, 1, go! Very Italian sounding. 
the town of Pazio. <laughs> it's not circular. Holy shit, a medieval town in anime that is not circular. <laughs> Yeah, they probably have never seen her. Yeah, that's all they know. Yeah, but she's not showing them. She's not showing her ears, she's not showing her tail. And without those, she is just a girl. Really nice music. And uh, I was waiting for a good chance to talk about it, <laughs> and the intro did not feel like a good chance. Uh, I keep saying, like, through the force of habit, down below, right? Support me on Patreon, down below. Subscribe, down below. But apparently YouTube's doing something, and the description is now, like, here, to, to, the, to the right of the video, and recommended videos are below. What the fuck? Yeah. I, I just got that update today. Cool. They're not even A-B testing it particularly much. I've not even seen it anywhere like in the news or any explanation why they're doing that. They just are. <laughs> they just decided to do that and that's that. Some UI designer felt his job was threatened, so he had to justify his existence, I guess. That's why most UI updates are made, by the way. It's to be able to tell the investors that, look, we're developing our product, we're making it better. Doesn't necessarily need to be better, just needs to change. That's all the investors care about. Port Town and Sweet Temptation. Could the Sweet, temp sweet Temptation be apples? Hmm. Nobody's moving, by the way. More apples. She wants an apple. How many apples? <laughs> That's a lot of apples! I was about to ask, how many apples can you buy for a single silver coin? Yeah, fair. Well, let's see you do it then. You're sleeping outside. <laughs> yeah, that's the second part of the title. Fair, yeah. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, makes sense. I was about to ask why is he not selling at the biggest one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. They are in the know what is needed where. Right? Oh, have you heard that in the northern regions there was a drought? Have you heard that there's been an abundance of fish at the Ujmerian Sea? Right? Grand expedition to the north. I guess we can tag along. Martin. What even are Martins? No, oh, it's some sort of a uh, two dimensional abacus. I was wondering what that device is. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Right. We are oh, we're changing currencies. That's right! There are more expensive silver coins and less expensive silver coins. Yeah! Okay, so she's an apprentice now. They smell like pelts. Apples. Oh, now you're just scamming the poor man. <laughs> now you're just scamming him. Probably, yeah. Assuming smell lingers. I mean, always a little bit more. <laughs> Okay, she knows how to trade, she knows how to barter, she's better than Lawrence himself. <laughs> she earned her keep, right? How, how much is it? Like 50 silver coins above the initial asking price, right? 50 silver coins for her, silver trenny coins.
And of course, they're eating edamame. It doesn't matter that it's based on Europe. Gotta have that edamame with, with your beer. Yeah, there were just those, like, five pelts that smell like apples. <laughs> uh, but you also might have damaged your business relationship. If he notices that he's been scammed, he's gonna tag you as a potential scammer and you're gonna have higher, like, harder time selling pelts and stuff in the future, right? Hmm. Okay, so was uh, Zeren just lying? Some figs? What else do they have there? I'll make notice. Ah, so it's just a guess. Not bad, yeah. Hmm. I guess Lawrence is bookkeeping properly if he can tell which part of his profit comes from selling wares and which part comes from currency speculation. Okay, Meatsfing has a lot of coins, apparently, for some reason. Every country wants to have theirs. Yeah, we can't have currency with the face of the old king on it, right? We need the new king. So, what, the currently fake mitzvah silver coins or whatever they were called can become a legitimate currency eventually? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, it's not volatile. Right. 
Like our current coins are not made with precious metals, for example. They have only the value that we assign them. A sweet bun of some sort. But... Yeah, they're dependent on another country economically. Yeah, to assign more worth to their coin, make it more stable. Hmm, okay. Mm-hmm. Right, because the lack of silver in newly minted coins could mean that the country is in trouble, they're not able to afford as much silver, so they're cutting it with something else. Mm-hmm. Makes perfect sense. Oh, the dude from the opening. Wife or apprentice? Neither. Okay. Really? Check density. Check their density. Weigh them down, drop them into water, measure the volume. Her special ears can tell. Can she legit not tell? Ah, she can. Yeah, you will be the only one with the information. Confirm the information. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Imagine how stupid the average person is and then acknowledge that half of them are stupider than that. <laughs> Is it though? Depends on the kind of metal you use. Softer metals would provide duller sound. So if they're cutting it with tin, sure. If they're cutting it with iron, not so much. Well, 
Well, you have the starting funds. Yeah, probably not. Yeah, sure. Can you... Speculate the coin in the other direction, maybe? I don't know. Hmm... <laughs> who would benefit from currency speculation. All right, sure. <laughs> Whatever your plan is. How do you make money from a dropping currency? Do you short it? Can you short currency? Kinda. Maybe. I mean, the... Currency has the value of one silver coin can buy the exact same amount of apples. As long as people don't know that the amount of silver decreases. And people don't know that the amount of silver decreases. So the value of the currency will, st will stay the same. So you can't really short it because the value isn't dropping, you know... Like, fully, properly, the physical value of a coin is dropping, but the perceived value of the currency isn't. Not yet, at least. Romantic merchant and moonlit farewell. Who are we saying farewell to, I wonder? Let's watch it. Let's wa watch it again. There we go, shall we? Uh -huh. It's a town of nobles and merchants. There's no king here. Thank you for not giving us another fucking cir circular city with a river through the middle. <laughs> Thank you so much. You can actually see how the city grew. How the like original plots of land looked and that's where the districts are it looks like voronoi noise that's how cities look it stops at a river because the river is big and uh, thick and uh, building a uh, bridge through it is not a good idea it's hard the uh, thinner river that you can build bridges over so people are settling on the other side makes perfect sense yeah i like the city I like that it's not an anime city. That's cool. That's good. And it's properly protected. There's a moat. There's a drawbridge, it seems. There's a nice gatehouse. Yeah, that's a nice city. Town with so many people and no king. Yeah, because it's a town in a kingdom, not a city-state. People from Paslo might travel through here. But yeah, they only know the description of hers and the biggest um, 
the most revealing features of hers are wolf ears and dark brown tail with, a wh with white at the tip, right? Mid-teens with flowing hair girl, that's like hundreds of girls like that around. Uh, especially since nobody has seen a holo, I don't think. Like, she hasn't manifested and shown herself to the villagers. Otherwise, the faith in her would not be decreasing, right? So, yeah, they probably won't be able to tell it's her. Oh, a little bit too far. Nice market with a couple of obelisks. Grapes, pears, uh, pomegranates. Um, yellow apples or white apples, green apples, whatever you want to call them. Red apples. Interesting to see the like common fruit, quote-unquote, uh, in pears, apples, uh, grapes, and then a uh, more... Not quite exotic, but more like... What should I call it? Hooter climate kind of fruit, like pomegranate. I uh, was under the impression that it's a little bit further north. The the action takes place at around. I know I don't want to compare it to Europe, but like you know a little further north. Uh, but I guess with city name like Pazzo, we might be in their equivalent of Italy. And uh, do they grow pomegranates in Italy? I think they should be able to. Yeah, very enticing apples. Commercial ships, and you can rent some space on a commercial ship. Apples for silver coin. And true to her word, she did earn her keep. Absolutely. Nobody's moving in the background. If I were to have a uh, clear criticism of this episode, nobody's moving in the background. Absolutely zero movement. Now, okay, on the left I see some people like... Yeah, I see some CG models taking a stroll. Yeah, but the people who are actually drawn, all of them are completely static. Hmm, sure, whatever whatever uh, in general it seems fairly like the style at least in the cities seems fairly sanitary i noticed like there are no clotheslines hanging from between the buildings uh, there are no potted plants there are no people sitting in the streets in front of a tavern uh, there are no like some windows open some windows closed none of that it's just a building, it's there, and that's it. Uh, people, seemingly, they're just set pieces. I'm not sure why, but I kind of expected an adaptation, a remake, no, not a remake, a re-adaptation, I guess you could say, uh, of a classic and much beloved story like that to have a little bit more production value. Like, it really seems like all the production value they put in the characters. I have absolutely no qualms about Lawrence. I have absolutely no qualms about Holo, about any of that. But the cities are kind of lifeless looking. Gotta say. Third lar largest company, yeah. But it's a branch company of a bigger one. So ultimately, it's probably the biggest company here. And have the benefit of a lot of information. And information is worth its weight in gold. Well, in information doesn't have weight, but you know what I mean. Yeah, we're selling the pelts. Martin pelts. What is a Martin? Martin. Oh, it's like a weasel-looking thing. Gotcha. Those are pretty big weasels, then. Uh, High-quality pelts. And yeah, a little bit of bargaining. 140, yeah, that's good. 
specifically trenny though yeah you gotta specify the kind of currency because silver coins well silver coins can be whatever he could give you the mitzvah silver coins or whatever that country was called that had like 17 different kinds of coin right he could have now you gotta specify that you want specifically the most valuable and the most stable currency Is that why you act as if you have not noticed? Uh, she's hyping him up as well. That's cool. He genuinely did not notice, but she wants to, you know, keep his renown intact. I like it. I like it. Oh, no. She's not talking about Lawrence. She's talking about this dude. Never mind then. <laughs> Never mind then. Yeah, now she's hyping him up a little bit and uh, giving him uh, the like credibility, right? Oh, master, you knew all this time, but you just wanted to lead that poor man along and uh, and reveal it much later, right? That that sort of a deal. Gotcha. To not like destroy his uh, standing with the guild, and this is just a scam, Holo. You're you're just scamming the poor man, honestly. Sure, those spells might be very strong and they might be very like nice and slick, but they do not naturally smell of apples. <laughs> Three per pearl, two hundred and ten coins. So, um, much more money than I thought they got. More. So they got 70 more coins than, uh, and I thought it was 50. No, it's 70 more coins. So, yeah, original price was 140. They got 50% more. That's, that's nice. Holo really seems born for it. I... <laughs> I always enjoy seeing uh, Japanisms, I like to call it, in uh, in food portrayed in anime. Not just anime, manga and, and uh, others as well. Uh, it's medieval Europe, mostly. But of course they're eating edamame. Because if you're Japanese and you're having beer, you cannot have it without edamame. So of course, medieval... Italy would also have edamame, right? Similarly, very often it happens that action takes place in uh, Renaissance era Germany or uh, World War One era fucking Czechoslovakia or whatever. And uh, instead of the classic, classic quote unquote, European serving of a dish, meaning you get a plate, there is potatoes, or something to that degree, there's meat and there's some veggies. And you get that plate and you eat it and that's your meal. They opt for the Japanese way of, oh, here's a bowl with this, another bowl with that, another bowl with that. Here's one plate, second plate, third plate. We have 15 plates in front of you, everything separately and you pick and choose, right? That's not how it looks, but they don't much care for like historical accuracy when it comes to, uh, like, food, for some reason. I don't know why. I mean, I know why. Japanese are very much proud of their cuisine, I've noticed. Uh, how many times have you seen a... Uh, have you read a manga or seen a show where the main character gets isekai and the first thing they do is, oh shit, rice! They're selling rice! I gotta buy some rice! I'm, go I'm gonna show you the power of rice! Rice is the, the fucking best! And then they get rice grains, the main character sows them, uses their isekai magic to grow them, they collect them, boil the rice, main character se serves the rice to all of his harem, and everyone's like, oh, oh my god, rice, rice is so good, isn't it? Right? <laughs> it always happens. It absolutely always happens. And then eventually, they uh, rediscover soy sauce, 
they rediscover miso. <laughs> it always happens. I I've read so many isekai manga back in the back in the days, semi recently, and pretty much every single one of them that was like uh, country growing or village growing or whatever. We gotta have a rice field. We gotta have a brewery where we make uh, uh, soy sauce. We gotta have a soy field for for the soy sauce. <laughs> Everywhere. Everywhere. Uh... Mm, touch handled them multiple times and never caught the scent of fruit. Yeah, they got scented by apples. Uh, he will be impressed to know the existence of such a method. Yeah, the scent of apples will quickly evaporate and he will be left with smelly Martin, Martin pelts and he will remember you as a scammer who scented a couple of pelts, gave him the one scented pelt and uh, sold him the whole wagon of pelts as if they were all scented. So you traded short-term gain in money for long-term gain in good standing with the guild. We'll see where it goes. Uh, no knowledge about the country whose silver coin was being newly minted. Yeah, nobody knows about that. And here they are having figs. At the bottom it's like pistachios or some sort of a nut. And on the left... I don't know, man. They look like wilted lemons. <laughs> I have no clue what that is. Okay, so after all, the exchange is uh, Zeren gives information and uh, Lawrence does all the crafting. Uh, in the previous episode, it was kind of implied that Lawrence would give money to, to Zeren and Zeren would do all the trading and all the speculation, but no. No, no, no. He just provides information. It's a guess. Right. But that's what makes it probable, because he wasn't 100% absolutely sure. If someone's trying to scam you into something, they are 100% certain of that. I, I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, man. The, the shit coin, it will, like, to the moon. Buy shit coin right now, man. It's gonna be, like, over, over fucking Bitcoin. It's gonna be, like... Countries will be bought with shitcoin, and they're always certain of that. NFTs, man, invest in NFTs. That's like the surefire invest in, in invest. Yeah, whatever. You know what I mean. <laughs> they're always sure of that. I don't know. It looks like it's just some crackers in the bowl, not wilted lemons after all. Uh, ten coins and ten percent, zero risk for Zeren. Absolutely no risk. So it makes sense to get into that. And uh, resolution settlement in uh, half a year. Proper contract. Plenty of different coins. And yeah, there is a lot of coins because every country wants to have their own, first of all. And every country wants... Every king wants to have his own currency of course and the church wants their own currency because why not because church is powerful church needs currency mm, but it probably tells us that uh, Mitzfing is where the um, church is located actually let me note it down I don't need to be remembering all those theories I can just note them down uh, Mitzfing is the HQ of church, probably. Loot silver coins were originally called fake trenny silver coins, so fake coins can eventually become uh, legitimized, or is it more the case of people laughing at loot saying, oh, your, yours are just bootleg tranny, what, what the fuck even is your currency? Uh, but loot grew enough, their economy grew enough for their coin to be more legit. Maybe. 
Treni. Yeah, silver and gold changes. The value of a coin is much higher than the silver or gold in them. Uh, you don't even have to reach for silver and gold. Uh, actually, bad example. Actually, the reverse example. Uh, Polish uh, grosz, which is like a cent. It's one hundredth of a złoty. Uh, I think one grosz coin and two grosz coin, at least, I'm not sure about the five grosz coin, actually cost more to manufacture than their uh, nominal value. And they wanted to get rid of them, but they didn't. <laughs> Figures. <laughs> um, yeah, trust in them needs to is needed to make transactions. Right. You need to trust that a given coin has more value than just the, the precious metal it represents. Treni mm, coins are trustworthy, but they have a rival. So, of course, uh, whoever controls the Treni coin would want to bump up the value, the perceived value of the Treni coin, at least. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is another moment of... Um, how did I call it in previous episode? Uh, being like mature, of this show being mature, they're not like Holo is not throwing a shit fit because she was wrong. It's cool. And earlier, uh, Lawrence was not throwing a shit fit because he was wrong. Oh, I was wrong. I, oh, not wrong, but rather because Holo upstaged him. He recognizes that, yeah, you did good. I might have, like, you know, various th feelings about it, but. You did good. I, I should learn something from you. Nobody's throwing a shit fit at absolutely, you know, least shit fit worthy situations. I like it. Mm -hmm. Because people are sensitive to the changes in purity of silver and gold. Enough to think that a small change is a huge one. Yeah, uh, the uh, physical value of a coin might change very little imperceptibly little but um uh, someone's gonna notice oh yeah the value actually like there's less silver and the perceived value will drop significantly more than the physical value of the coin mm? makes sense uh when the mentor plans to make a great change in the period of a coin they will start with a small changes to monitor the market's reaction yeah will people notice will people believe that this amount of change in uh, in the alloy will you know impact the uh, perceived value of the coin proportionally uh, or will it impact or will it not impact the value of the coin or will it impact it catastrophically right how much sawdust can we put in bread before people start noticing that there is sawdust in it basically Vive. We have a name to the face now. And yeah, Lawrence is a little bit jelly. J -j -j just, just a little bit. Just a little bit jelly. Recently minted Treni coins. Nothing's changed. Uh, we have not seen the uh, design at the rim. And now we see the design at the rim. So that means the coins have already been uh, uh, tamper-proofed. I talked about it earlier, how you can just uh, scrape off the outer layer of the coin, and the coin is uh, ever so slightly smaller, imperceptibly so, and it still has full value in people's eyes, but you have that little bit of silver dust that you can smelt into an ingot eventually. But yeah, they are, those are tamper-proof, or as tamper-proof as they could make them. No changes. Some changes in sound, apparently. Uh, there's a much easier way to tell the change in the alloy. You just change, the, you just tell the volume. That's it. Or, or, you don't even need to check for volume. The coins are the exact same, just check them for weight. 
unless of course the alloy has been uh, altered in a way where it got a little bit more of a heavier metal than steel and a little bit more of lighter metal than steel right a little bit of tin that makes it heavier and a little bit of aluminum that makes it a little bit lighter and eventually you get the same density as silver could be uh, I just noticed that uh, our boy here has leg hair. Cool detail. You very rarely see that unless the entire character is hairy. The only way that you see body hair on people in anime is if they are like a fucking dwarf with a full beard, then you see some body hair. If they have no facial hair, they have no body hair. They're as smooth as a Barbie doll. Yeah, the ear twitch. Hello is not the only one observant here. Mm -hmm. Men are jealous idiots, idiots, and females are idiots who feel happy about such things. Newer coins sound duller. Purity is decreasing. Uh, again, like, I'm gonna take it. In the context of the show, sure. In the context of the show, Coin sounds duller means the purity is decreasing. In reality, though, not so much. The sound of metal becomes duller when the metal is softer, right? The sound of tin banging on tin will be much more duller than the sound of steel bumping on steel. So it could be that they added tin to the coins, which is softer than silver, if I'm not mistaken, so they sound duller. It could be... Uh, but what if they added aluminum or iron to to the coin, to the mix? That would make them sound uh, less dull. So you can't really tell which way it's changing based on sound alone. I don't know. I I'm just gonna take it as uh, at face value here. Uh, Jeren lied. Easy to make a profit if the purity of silver is increasing yeah but if it's decreasing you're kind of screwed you could buy yeah sure you could buy them when their value decreases and hope that uh, said value increases eventually yeah but it's a long-term investment uh, not something that can turn profit in half a year mm, and uh, zeren might be working for someone who would benefit from people buying out money that's being devalued? <laughs> the country whose money is being devalued? Physical value decreases. Yes, but look, so many people are interested in our currency. So many people are buying our coin, exchanging for our coin. It must have some worth to them, so the perceived value increases. The distance between physical value and perceived value increases. At least they are hoping for it to at least increase to the point where the increase in perceived value offsets the de decrease in physical value. Ideally, Perceived value increases more than it used to be. Huh. Maybe. Uh, it's called what? Treni. Treni silver. Uh, Treni mint is um, hoping to increase perceived value of their coin by having people buy it out to offset the Decrease in physical value. Makes sense. 
who else could benefit? Who else could benefit from spreading that sort of a rumor? Through Zeren. And perhaps others like him. Hmm, the country with the rival coin. Maybe by removing large quantities of Treni coin from circulation, people would have no choice but to use the rival. And when Treni coin is freed from people gathering so much of it, it's going to flood the market and uh, drop the value of the Treni coin. Could be. Treni coin disappearing in speculants votes will cause the rival coin to be the only one usable uh really sing tranny will flood the market and drop its value further two ways it can go two ways it can go how do you as an owner of a currency being devalued make money on it though hmm <laughs> I don't know. I have no clue. Shorting is the one and only thing that comes to mind, but it's not going to work until like people realize that the coin is being devalued. And even then, how do you exactly short currency? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it's shorting. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But if he wanted to short the currency, he would purchase large quantities of it so he would not go to the Milan trading company they don't deal in currency they deal in merchandise unless he wants to buy a lot of stuff with valuable currency and then sell it for devalued coins I don't know I don't know what's the plan here and don't tell me just so we're clear don't tell me what's the plan Romantic Merchant and Moonlit Farewell. Well, hopefully not to Holo. Probably not to Holo, let's be honest here. Ah, uh, good episode. I mean, what else, can, what else am I going to say? Uh, another nice episode of trading, of uh, mercantilism, of uh, trying to figure out the best, uh, you know, uh, profit, stuff like that. I'm liking it. I'm really liking it so far. Uh, yeah. There wasn't really that much more to the episode, but uh, I don't think it's one of the shows that have much more to their episodes. Uh, I don't think it's one of the shows that has, like, an episode that drops seven different lore bombs about something and completely changes your perception of the world or whatever. No, it's a show that goes at its own pace and uh, just deals with the main theme. It doesn't stray towards 
Lorenz turning out to be the chosen one having to defeat the Demon Lord or anything of the sort. So it's perfectly fine. A very chill series, but also gives you something to, to think of, right? Some theories about how to speculate currency best or stuff like that. Uh, I like how uh, Holos and uh, Lorenz's relationship is slowly, slowly budding. I like it. It's a very, very slow... You can't even call it a romance, can you? Not yet. Not yet. There's some flirting, some very subtle, very small pieces of flirting from Holo's side. Uh, there is some slight jealousy from Lawrence's side, but there's no, like, you know, full-blown official romance going on dates and shit like that. Not yet. Perhaps eventually, but not quite yet. Uh, it's cool that it's a slow burn, and it really seems like it's not going to be, you know, one big boom changing the status quo entirely, uh, but rather they will be growing into it slowly, slowly, but surely they will grow into it. And uh, I'm perfectly down for that. Yeah, I think that's it. Good episode. I enjoyed myself, uh, but I think I said my piece, everything about my theories about uh, silver speculation and stuff like that. Uh, but maybe you guys have a different idea. If so, say so in the comments down below. What did you think of this episode, of my reaction, my theories, stuff like that? No spoilers, please, I beg of you. Spoilers can go to my Discord here, also in the description below. Or, sorry, or to the right side of the screen, whichever layout YouTube gave you today. <laughs> like this video if you liked it, subscribe to be notified of future re re releases. Yeah, of... fuck. Yeah, subscribe to be notified of future releases. Uh, not only Spice and Wolf, but also Yuki Yuna is a hero, Unnamed Memory, Kaito Otome, Sentai Daishkaku Blue Archive and uh, Kaiju 8 Go and others coming in the future. Click the bell to be notified when I go live, because I do stream sometimes. Support the channel if you want monetarily on Patreon down below or to the right, uh, where for 10 bucks a month you get early access to non-seasonal shows like Yuki Yuna, and for just a dollar you get a role on the Discord and a place in the credits. You can support me directly on YouTube as well via membership, super thanks, super chats, stuff like that. And if you don't want to spend any money whatsoever, share my content, spread the word, it costs you absolutely nothing and helps the channel a lot. And now, with all of that out of the way, that's going to be it from me for today. So as always, you guys do all the good stuff. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Cheers. And here's my wonderful Patreons. QB, Without a Net, The Cabris Viver, Watson, Zerene, Yuki Ala, Ishtamu, Dr. Wood, Akamasar, Marsh, Fassel, and Hans Peter. And you can join them without having to sell apple-scented pelts. <laughs>